Northeastern Montana, near the site of old Fort Peck, Ford V8 trucks are helping Uncle Sam build the biggest earth dam in the world to harness the mighty Missouri. Five years hence, when the job is done, the headwaters of the most destructive tributary of the Mississippi will become a lake almost as long as Lake Ontario. The job itself is tremendous, with promise of vast benefit to the whole Missouri Valley and the Mississippi Valley south of St. Louis. Here's a map of the big undertaking. Primarily, the project here is intended to provide a navigable channel between eight and nine feet in depth from Sioux City, Iowa, to St. Louis. Flood control and prevention of erosion is a secondary purpose. By storing up the floodwaters, the reservoir will protect thousands of acres of fertile land now subject annually to flooding and serious erosion. This great project covers 400 square miles. It will impound sufficient surplus water for irrigation of 80,000 acres of farmland below the dam and the possibility of irrigating approximately 100,000 acres more in the valley of the Yellowstone. The construction of the dam is only one part of the job. Four tunnels will carry the river's normal flow around the dam, and a spillway will discharge the floodwaters. Railway lines, trestles, four giant electric dredges, a 288-mile power line, and scores of other works. In addition, the government has built on the river bluff a model town for permanent residents. Temporary homes are provided for the families of employees serving in administrative, executive, or supervisory capacity of both the government and contractors. The first major job in the construction of the dam was the preparation of the foundation. The river valley has a bed of glacial sand and gravel, overlaid with a deposit of gumbo from 5 to 40 feet in thickness. Before the dam could be started, engineers ordered this 4 million cubic yard layer of treacherous soil stripped off right down to the sand to prevent danger of slippage between the fill and the original soil, and to facilitate drainage at the lower edge of the dam. Here you see this huge stripping contract underway, one of the fastest and most efficient earth-moving jobs on record. Huge elevating graders accomplish the task at record speed. Watch this big elevating grader at work. Its sharp revolving plow clips off a half-mile slice of the rich earth, lifts it with the moving belt, and dumps it into the Ford V8 truck alongside. Never before has man devised a faster, more efficient method of earth removal. This is mass production with a vengeance. 30 trucks to each elevating grader, loading and hauling, really geared to cut costs to the bone. All day long, these Ford V8 trucks are being loaded. And then off they go one and a half miles over the soft sand and gumbo, sometimes through blinding dust, with a load of more than four tons. And here we are at the spoils dump, where the trucks unload, backing right to the edge of the dump. No time lost there, and over it goes. Every one of these loads makes a three-mile round trip in 12 minutes, five trips an hour, 30 trips every six-hour shift. These Ford V8 have to perform day in and day out under grueling conditions, and they do. And here's a fact that's evident in every one of these scenes. Without adequate transportation, this huge construction job would be impossible. Both the government and private contractors are relying upon the motor truck for the bulk of the transportation requirements. And the significant point of the whole story is this. The majority of these trucks engaged both by the Army engineers and by the private contractors are Ford V8. It's hard to visualize a job as big as this one, but listen to some of these facts and figures in the plans of the government engineers. Four million cubic yards of gravel for the toes. One million six hundred thousand cubic yards of rock for the riprap on the upstream face. Four miles long, 242 feet high, 2,875 feet wide at its base and 100 feet wide on top. 100 million cubic yards of earth to form the Great Embankment, or nearly half of all the earth excavated to build the Panama Canal. Here we are on the river bluff. A mechanical shovel is cutting down the slope. Another proving ground for the Ford V8 truck. Two yards of earth at a bite, but how those springs stand up. Four yards to the load, back and forth, hour after hour, and never a quitter in the fleet. Now and again, you can see why this job is a test of power and dependability. And the Ford v 8 come through with flying colors. There's a drag line at work, stripping the gumbo from the slopes where the abutment to the dam will rest. Two more yards of gumbo swing through the air, and another truck is loaded. Heavy loads and heavy going, but back of every haul, under the foot of every driver is that most important fact, power, which is getting the big job done on time and right.
Watch that Ford V8 pull out of the soft gumbo. Plenty of power there. He's on his way now to the town site, where the engineers have directed that the material from stripping be dumped. More load derived and are dumped. Grading operation, town of Fort Peck. See those clouds of dust? You know what that can do to a motor. These trucks are working under almost impossible conditions, but oil bath air cleaners protect these V8 engines. They're built to take it and like it. So they go right on performing on the job. And here's another phase of the big undertaking, laying asphalt roads in the government town of Fort Peck. Gravel and sand are hauled to the mixer. The mixture is conveyed to the spreaders. This is to be a model town with modern homes heated by natural gas, lighted by electricity, with stores, theaters, and every modern convenience, and a network of modern streets. Just make it a point to come through this place in a few years' time, and you'll have your eyes open. But here and now, wherever there's work to be done, you'll find the Ford V8, hauling water for mixing the concrete foundations of transmission lines, attending to the thousand and one important parts of an enterprise which depends upon speed, service, and the ability to stand the test. You'll find them carting away the butts of the great piles which have been driven to build the railway trestles. This load is destined for a rancher six miles away across the prairie, a five-ton load. There it goes down the dry wash, up the hill again with power to spare, and into the ranch yard. There's plenty of firewood here for the winter. Other V8s are busy in other ways, unloading railway ties along the right of way, carrying supplies, hauling long transmission poles for the new power line. They're busy distributing gasoline and fuel oil to trucks and mechanical shovels on the far-flung job. The Ford V8 becomes a traveling gas station. Over the prairie, uphill, downhill, rough roads are smooth. It's all the same to the Ford V8. And then there's this other important phase of a big construction job. Men who work hard must eat. So the Ford V8 becomes a traveling grocery, delivering food to scattered homes about the town site, being sure that every member of this great army of workers is kept fit for each day's work. Or they're busy trucking supplies from the government stores to the commissaries operated by various contractors on the project. Not as big a tonnage job as the main operation, but just as important. While the preparations for the construction are in progress, other contractors working in the hills near Saco, Montana, are gathering and hauling great stores of glacial boulders. These will form the foundations in the construction of the toes of the dam. Three million tons of rock will be required. Figure it out for yourself how many trips to the rock pile this means for the Ford V8. Meanwhile, not far away at Cole, Montana, other contractors using Ford V8 are making ready the stores of sand and gravel required for the concrete walls of the tunnels and spillway. Here are some of the details in this big and complicated job, where every mechanical means to speed the work along is being employed, loading the sand and gravel with mechanical shovels, hauling the mixture to the hoppers, carried by conveyors to the graders, Separators and washers are all parts of the process. Then again by conveyors to the hoppers where the sand and gravel ready to use is dumped into trucks. From here, hauled to the storage bins, it'll be shipped by railroad to the site as needed. And so here in northeastern Montana, we can see just another of the many striking examples of history in the making in which again, Ford V8 are doing a great job, doing it for Uncle Sam and for the millions whose fortunes are bound up in the development of the great Missouri River. <laughs>